please rise and uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? So help you God. Gentlemen, we'll state his point of order. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, despite our repeated requests for access to the evidence, we received less than 48 hours ago over 8,000 pages of documentation. Just two days ago, President Trump stated publicly that he hopes that his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, will report to the Department of Justice and to Congress the results of Mr. Giuliani's efforts in Ukraine last week to pursue these false allegations meant to tarnish Vice President Biden. President Trump's persistent and continuing effort to coerce a foreign country to help him cheat to win an election is a clear and present danger to our free and fair elections and to our national security. The overwhelming evidence of this scheme is described in detail in a nearly 300-page document entitled the Trump Ukraine Impeachment Inquiry Report, formally transmitted from the House Permanent Selecting Committee on Intelligence to this committee a few days ago. The report relies on testimony from numerous current and former government officials, the vast majority of whom are nonpartisan career professionals responsible for keeping our nation safe and promoting American values around the globe. The evidence from these witnesses cannot seriously be disputed. The president placed his personal interests above the nation's interests in order to help his own reelection efforts. Announced an investigation into President Trump and Mr. Giuliani's efforts in Ukraine, parentheses mid-September, Z, President Zelensky, should be able to move forward publicly. The president's scheme is actually quite simple, and the facts are not seriously in dispute. It can be boiled down to four key takeaways. First, that President Trump directed a scheme to pressure Ukraine into opening two investigations that would benefit his 2020 re-election campaign and not the U.S. national interest. Second, President Trump used his official office and the official tools of U.S. foreign policy, the withholding of an Oval Office meeting and $391 million in security assistance to pressure Ukraine into meeting his demands. Third, everyone was in the loop his chief of staff, the secretary of state, and vice president. And fourth, despite the public discovery of this scheme, which prompted the president to release the aid, he has not given up. He and his agents continue to solicit Ukrainian interference in our election, causing an imminent threat to our elections and our national security. Ukraine into meeting his demands. Third, everyone was in the loop. The Democrat narrative virtually ignores any evidence that's not helpful for their case. It ignores, for instance, that Ambassador Sondland's testimony that he presented, um, that there was a quid pro quo, and it ignores the many public statements made by Ukrainian officials. The report presents a story as if the evidence is clear, when in reality, it's anything but. Democrats have gone to great lengths to gather information to build their case, and they've even obtained and released phone records relating to the communications of the president's personal attorney, a reporter, and a member of Congress. There are additional phone records uh, that have not yet been released, and our members remain concerned about the prospect of more phone records being released. There have been a lot of hyper, hyper, uh, hyperbole, a lot of hysteria over the last three months about this inquiry and the underlying facts. I believe a lot of this can be traced back to the anonymous whistleblower complaint, I believe the whistleblower reframed a lot of the facts at issue and caused witnesses in the inquiry to recast their views. And it's unfortunate that we haven't been able to interview the whistleblower. Finally, some have likened the impeachment inquiry to a special prosecutor's investigation. If one accepts that comparison, one should also ex um, expect that like Ken Starr and, and, and Robert Mueller, uh, the chairman should testify, and our, our members, all the